Everybody, welcome to HackerCast bonus round, where we're going to do password cracking. You know, a lot of people have heard of password crack, have their passwords stolen, and they always read these articles about, you know, the bad guys are going to crack your passwords and whatever that means. And uh, we want to demonstrate for you what that looks like to a bad guy. And one way they might go about cracking your passwords through brute force, and it's something called John the Ripper. So Matt's going to walk us through that. Yeah, I guess. I'm going to try, at least. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Show us your hacking skills. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, kind of a low bar of what hacking skills look like, but I'm just going to kind of give a primer for those of you who have no idea anything about password cracking uh, or anything like that. I'm going to just go an inch deep, all right? So to really bring this into web app land, because that's where we like to live and play, Right? Uh, I figured what better uh, type of password to focus on than WordPress passwords, because we just like to beat up on WordPress <laughs> on our <laughs> podcast. So, uh, yeah, we, you know, usually when you see a password cracking demo, uh, it'll be some combination of, you know, Etsy password, Etsy shadow, and John the Ripper will go at these hashes, and, you know, or Windows passwords, or something like that, and system passwords. But, I thought that that would be pretty boring. It's been done before. I wanted to do some WordPress ones. So WordPress uses a uh, very particular uh, hashing algorithm that's a PHP-based hashing algorithm. Uh, it's called PHPass, or I don't know how to pronounce it. Not exactly MD5 hashing, but it's kind of MD5 hashing. Um, there's some random salts involved. Um, if you guys aren't really familiar with hashing and salts, we're not going to get too deep into that right now. Um, but this is not plain text passwords, right? So uh, the very minimum that a website that you go to uh, and store it, create a password and they're going to store it on their side, the very minimum they should be doing is hashing uh, with some kind of algorithm. Uh, unfortunately, MD5 was broken how many years ago now, guys? Wow, and it's also the wrong algorithm because it's fast. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been broken for a very long time. Um, I think the most up-to-date, one of the better ones right now is Bcrypt. What, what? Yeah, so Bcrypt has this thing called a work factor, and, and like Jer said, MD5 is really, really fast, so the hash is pretty easy to break. Bcrypt, you can purposely slow it down, so it's got this thing called a work factor. The higher you set the work factor, the slower it's going to take to actually create a hash which means the harder it's going to be to crack. So Bcrypt work factor 10 or 11, I think, is the best practice right now um, until we break those. I'll show you guys what this looks like. So on the right here, uh, we've got, I created a little password file, uh, and this is what a WordPress password file would look like. These hashes on the right, so the usernames are on the left, Matt, J, or Robert. So they all start with this $P, $B. That's kind of how you spot that this was hashed with uh PH pass and uh, and yeah, so that's that's how you can tell what what these look like. Um, and so I went ahead and um, I went and grabbed a quick program that can actually help create the so PH pass hash uh, <laughs> is the command that I'm running, and then I give it a password. So this was Robert's password that I hashed. Um, he told me one of his old passwords, and it was I less than three Matt resulted in this hash on the bottom over here next to Robert, right? So I ran John the Ripper on all of these. I want to show the results of um, this WordPress password text that I was cracking earlier. So this is the result of the password cracking to plain text. My password being password, it took uh, less than one second. We're talking milliseconds. Uh, Jeremiah 2911, it took uh, roughly 30 minutes, and Robert's, uh, which was I less than three, Matt, took about an hour. Um, this was all just on my MacBook Pro, no, like, special anything, pretty basic, uh, you know, just throwing a word list at John the Ripper, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a second, but I just wanted to kind of show you what the results would look like of these hashed passwords, all right? So, if we want to create some new ones, all right, so that John will run the right way again, let's go ahead and, um, create a new, uh, random salted hash of password, for Matt, because I'm kind of silly and don't really know much about security and just need a password really quick, right? Um, and then, hey, Jerry, what do you want your password to be? Aloha. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so I just wanted this to, to start running again um, and 
since it already successfully cracked some of them, it wouldn't have run again. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run John the Ripper um, with a... Let me just go. What was my command that I wrote on this? So this is what I... Uh, the command I was running. So I'm running John. I'm passing it a word list. This is a very popular word list called Rock You. And what that is is just a very, very big list of popular passwords that was compiled from password breaches that you see in the news. Okay. And what was it? Rock you at TXT. So these are the most basic ones. Bottom tail. Yep. You can see some on the, some on the bottom here. Um, so I pass it this word list. You don't really have to pass it a word list, but I did. Um, so we're going to run this. Um, boom, password got cracked immediately, right? It was it was in the, that's the one, two, three, fourth password that it guessed after one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> and so on. Um, and then this is just going to run for a while. If you look right there, the ETA uh, for it being done was like, I don't know, in a few days. But when I, when I was not recording, it was going to be done in a few hours. Get through that whole word list, and I promise you that Aloha and I heart Matt would have been popped within an hour or so, even on a MacBook, which uh, is not the most powerful uh, hacking device. The other the other option I just want to talk about real quick is this rules option. Uh, this is really popular because what this does is, okay, I gave it this word list, and that's great, right? It's going to help me brute force instead of just going A, A1, A2, whatever, right, and going through alphabet. Uh, at least this is, you know, a few million actual passwords, so the likelihood of it hitting something is probably way higher, right? Uh, but what this rules thing does is it actually mangles the, the attempted password. So you're going to give it, you know, uh, Detroit over here that we see. Um, it, with rules set, it's going to capitalize the D and, you know, it's going to camel case it and try to do that. It's going to put zeros for the O's. It's going to kind of mess around with it a bit so that you can, um, you know, get a little bit more out of your word list. Actual password boxes are going to guess way, way more than a few hundred per second. Oh, yeah. So I, I had that unfortunate incident where I had forgotten one of my key passwords to have had access to all my files, and uh, Jeremy Gosney and the guys over at uh, Stricture Group, you know, who specialize in password cracking, they have these mega password cracking rigs like these big... Uh, you know, F FPGA, you know, rigs that cost, what, I think he said, like, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 he was running on his rig, and, man, that thing would just carve through passwords and whatever crypto you got. The reason I picked the passwords that I did, um, because I wanted to kind of put this out there, um, this is kind of advice for anyone uh, as far as password strength goes, is... Uh, a lot of people think they're good if they use their capital letter, their special character, and their number, and, you know, it's... Uh, over eight characters, because that's about as strict of a password policy as you'll see on most websites these days. Um, I remember until a while ago, even most a lot of popular banks uh, wouldn't even allow special characters. <laughs> Never mind require them; wouldn't <laughs> even allow them. Um, and so, or they or they'll limit the length. That's a very common one as well. Super common is limit the length, right? And I just wanted to kind of show to people that, yeah. Jeremiah 2911, or I, capital I, less than three, whatever the heck you want to write, um, still, it, on a, any sort of uh, respectable password cracking rig would be done in minutes. Yeah, I think one of the techniques of the bad guys that they use quite effectively, if they want to hack someone or something, they don't go after the main target, they'll go after an adjacent target, one that this person has accounts on this system which they really want to hack, but they'll hack another one, a weaker target, to grab the passwords off that machine because people reach and they'll crack it on those machines and then apply it to their real target and it's quite effective. How do you, how do you guys uh, like making your passwords nowadays? Oh gosh, I, I, I basically just bang on my keyboard for a while using upper and lower case stuff and then I copy and paste it around and put a whole bunch of special characters in there and most of them are probably like 15, 20, 20 letters in place and I really, it's, it's something I can't possibly know so I, I have a password manager system that is copy and paste, is copy and paste. Same thing, I use the uh, random uh, generator inside those password uh, tools um, I don't really like using them in a lot of cases because <laughs> a lot of people try to do really stupid things like 
trim certain characters or like they'll like strip them out or whatever and then what'll end up happening is they'll do it in different ways depending on when it's called like forgot password will be different than login which will be different than registration so a lot of special characters really will cause you problems even though they're really good for password complexity but would be even better is just to have even a longer password um, which is sort of the Matt Inman's or uh, uh, no it was like XADC's advice you know just have a really really long uh, past phrase as opposed to complex, you know, symbols and whatever. So I'm sort of torn on the right way to go in that way. I will uh, side note asterisk to the phrases. Don't pick popular phrases either. If I had a phrase in this word list, it would be done easily. I could put every Bible verse in this re relatively trivially, and it'll be it'll be popped. Popped. No question, right? Yeah. So you got to pick a phrase that's easy for you to remember, but not like a line from a song or a Bible verse or something like that. Or, or, or really even a sensical thing. I mean, picking random words in random orders, um, you know, as long as you can remember it, it doesn't have to be something probably should never be have anything you've ever typed or have ever seen online or anything like that, but more just something you've come up with arbitrarily. And, the, of course, the other one we can't forget is the two-factor off. Two -factor off. You know, you know, your phone number, SMS phone messages. Number, so SMS somebody's going to steal your password or guess it. Not going to matter. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks, thanks Robert. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Take, take. Bye, Roy. Bye, Roy.